Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to more Wargame Red Dragon. Today in 1v1, I'm a lieutenant marching band and I'm fighting Karl Dönitz. Now, I'm going to be watching this from my perspective and this way you can see what I saw. I might switch every now and then, but I think this is going to make it more interesting. Now, um, very important to note is that I had Blitzwar coaching me through this match and his playstyle is very aggressive, as you might know from his videos. If you don't, go over to his channel, link down below in the description. Highly recommend it. Um, I usually, on a map like this, I go for an attack over here, I go for an attack over there, and sometimes, uh, when I'm starting from the other side, I do an attack with a couple of vehicles here, just completely block off Golf and thus Charlie, and then fight over here and eventually CV Golf and Charlie. That's not the plan today. The plan today is to go for the buildings here. Basically ignore everything here except for one unit of Erico. And just push here. Push Delta and Echo. The opener for this is going to be an MI-17, which will fly over there to drop off a CV. We're going to have the MI-8P with Erico inside and a second one at that. This is to claim not only this building here, but also this building over here, the one over there in Echo. And by holding that one, you effectively also lock down Echo uh, from attacks to some extent, and definitely from helicopter attacks. I have my own CV there, of course, but further CVs going, sorry, further uh, helos going there are the Salamandra for reconnaissance, the MI8 TKT, and the Sokol for air to air. Ground based will be the T55, an Erico, and an HGM. They're all going to move to Delta. And over on the right, I have another Erico, which is going to be providing intel slash offensive maneuvers in Charlie. Now, here we go. Uh, drop off. I get all my CV into cover. I get the MI-17 from there. Oh, right. And there's a triple stack of charioteers. Uh, there's two XA-185KTs and a spike, which are also going to be moving there. But they'll follow up with the helicopter attack a little later. Now then, we're off. Um, always interesting to see how the start is going to go. Who is going to go where? What units are they going to bring? Uh, what deck are you facing? How aggressive is your opponent? First up, I spot nothing. So, this allows me to drop off the Erico here and here. As well as have the other Erico move to center. He has already captured Boris. But then again, I have already captured Fedor, so it's entirely possible that this is either an airborne CV or a ground-based wheeled CV that I drove in. Something fast, anyway. I drop off my MI-8, so that's the Erico in one building and the Erico in the other building. Uh, this maneuver is something that I'm going to definitely make use of more, because it is such a good position, and I usually don't go as aggressive as that. What else we got? Uh, we got the spike over here. And I have the XA-180, which is taking fire from something. So I drop off, and while the XA-180 gets blown up, the Erico just about make it out alive, and I instantly spot the Offender, which is a Fiat 6616. The spike immediately takes aim and eliminates the reconnaissance unit, and this proves critical. Because the units that are coming up here, which are 3K AFV-25s, so that's 15-point vehicles with an autocannon. As well as a K1, those need to go. And if they don't have any reconnaissance, they're not going to be nearly as dangerous as they normally would be. Over here, the Ericos have been dropped off, and this guy is taking aim at an inbound helicopter. Fairly low veterancy, but nonetheless, it has to get neutralized. T-55 spots, in tandem with the Erico, Another K1, and the triple stack of infantry has just disembarked a group of Sochong Su-85. But here's the critical point. Without reconnaissance, the T-55 P on PSV, which is a medium stealth unit, cannot be detected. So I get free shots at his units. And his units have that K1. So first up, uh, um, this is actually a bit of a misprioritization. I should have prioritized the K1 over the KA of E25s because they're not that important. Erico get detected after firing at the K1s. I probably could have had them weapon off, but I wasn't micromanaging them nearly well enough. So the Erico, they do take another shot at the K1 and almost kill it. The 
Uh, T-55 is working through its second KAFV-25 and does not kill it, sadly. There we go, there's the first kill. Now, this is the point where Blitz said, okay, he got 2K1 over there, he has a couple of KAFV-25s, he has to have another CV over there. So, most of his force is here. So, we're going to move. And that means that the XA-185KTs with the, uh, air, the standard Ikari inside, they're going to move right into Boris. No stopping, no sightseeing, right there. The Erko here are only going to be getting support from the MI-17 over there and the MI-8P. And there is an anti-air unit that's coming up, but right now, it's not here yet. So, the T-55 over here in the middle is still working over the KA of E-25s. And the XA-185KTs drive right into Boris without any sign of opposition. This move is something I probably would not have done. I would not have tried it, but it is um, so beautifully aggressive that the enemy has to respond, thereby giving up the Boris spawn. And by giving up the Boris spawn, I effectively neutralize the middle entirely, because his forces have to come out of Anna until he resecures the Boris uh, spawn. Meanwhile, the Erico here are encountering a KAFV-25 and immediately wiping it out. Now. At this point, uh, Blitz said, okay, good, drop off your Yekiri. All right, we'll drop off the Yekiri. Yekiri know where the CV is, and it is a Bonbu. So most likely the helicopter that we saw over here, the UH-14, that was the transport for these. They had the low veterancy, and that means it's probably this transport. But Blitz said, no, we're not stopping. Uh, we're going to move those KTs right into his base. Because, again, his main force is over there. He hasn't been able to buy that much, and whatever he has been buying, he's sent here. And he's now desperately trying to send more stuff here, but that's going to get cut off really quickly. So the Yekri are immediately wiping out the CV, and with that, temporarily shutting down the middle of the map. Of course, there is still the threat of whatever has already been spawned in, but the Fiat 6616 is not likely to be that much of a problem, so much as I can jump it with the Yekri. At this point, I cannot see any more of his units. I can't see this one Nanasan Shiki, but it's rather not a threat. And I'm moving another XA-180 with uh, Raniko Yekri into position in the Dimitri to still keep consolidating the position there. Now, another Fiat 6616 comes in, and I get told by Blitz to spawn in a CV. We're going to send a helicopter CV right over there. But this is where I make a mistake. Because the CV, the MI-17 with the command infantry inside, is supposed to get escorted by all the helicopters that I have previously used. The MI-8Ps, the Sokol, the KT. And in the midst of um, firing the artillery from here, fending off the guys over there, and doing a push on his main spawn, I get a little busy. Uh, I'm trying to find a CV here, and I find it, but sadly... The KTs, this KT that was spawning it dies. The other KT can't see it, so I need to get closer, but there's definitely something shooting me from over there, and it's just killed the second KT. Over here, the Fiat 6616 is dealing with my Yekri, which do not have the range with their limited uh, M72A4 law. And this is where I make the mistake. This guy almost flew with an airspace of the closed arrow, so I'm lucky he didn't get that close. And aside from that, he's not being escorted. So this Fiat, which is not the first slash only Fiat here, because there's another one over there, it shoots down the helicopter, or is working on just that. And I desperately try to secure it with the MI-8T KT, so that's the one with the rocket pods and the autocannon, but sadly, not in time. And that mistake has cost me the Boris spawn for now. It's not desperate yet, it's not dire the situation, because he has lost his spawn. So he cannot spawn in anything as much as I can. But sadly, I don't have another uh, helicopter-borne CV. I don't have another infantry CV like this, because one's over there, one's over here, and the other one just died in Boris. So I need to work on something else. In the meanwhile, the closed arrow and the 6616 are working over the Erko. Uh, there's So Chung Su over there, the Chumats are coming in. Uh, he... Oh yeah, 
Um, I spawn in a CV here. And if you lose this the area where you spawned it in, you still get to spawn in. And that allows me to pick up the command infantry from here, move it into the helicopter, and then once again, fly it into Boris. In the meanwhile, the Erico, by some miracle, with one jetomatic, effectively, are still holding off a couple of infantry squads. And I know that this is basically the only stuff that he still has over here, because he hasn't been able to spawn anything in. So, trying again. MI-17. This time I have a cordon of helicopters in position. But we have company. An OH-1 ninja joins the fight. And it is working hard on killing off every other unit that I had. Every other helicopter, that is. So, they take some damage from the Ikri, and it's finally the Sokol that seals the deal. Meanwhile, over here, the Erko spotted a, sh uh, a closed arrow, some other air defense unit. And my other Sokol is working over this reconnaissance unit, which has caused my Yekri so much grief. There's a pretty constant bombing run campaign going on with the F5A, with the napalm canisters. Sokol takes a valiant couple of shots at it, hitting one, not hitting the second. And finally, my CV arrives in Boris. With that, I have control over the area, and I immediately start spawning in stuff. XA-185KTs, MI-8P with reconnaissance, so this Erico. More Erico over there, but there is a gun tank over here. So I reconsider the MI-8, and I decide on something else. A couple of charioteers are also going to be required. Uh, the Salamandra is on the receiving end of the full attention from the gun tank. It's trying to deal damage with the HGM, but it's getting very quickly punished, and it dies. So at this point I have one MI-17, which is flat out landed. Taking off is not really the, my <laughs> proudest moment of this match. Um, and now the squad comes in. Now that I have my points spent and my area uh, or my reinforcements are coming in, I can temporarily get these guys into a tree line to at least give them some sense of security. Over on the middle, I have the P on PSVs, both sitting stationary, waiting for uh, targets to either pop out or for me to give them in order to move up. Now, again, this is normally where I probably would have secured Boris and played fairly defensively. But I had Blitz whispering in my ear and he said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go right on the offense. So that meant the XA-185KTs from here are going to go right to Anna, which is neutral. Courtesy, most likely, of this big guy over here, the Iraq-91, also known as the Urigan, which has delivered a couple of high-explosive packages, 11 HE each, into the enemy spawn. Not necessarily killing the CV, but at least forcing it to move. Now, the gun tank dies. I think that was the KTs that did that, the 185s. Yep, he's resecured Anna. I got the charioteers and the KTs rushing to the defense of the CV because the 6616 is closing in. And this bridge is getting in my fucking way. Because you cannot shoot down from the bridge. I cannot see the Fiat. The Fiat can see the CV. I'm down to four guys in my CV squad. Three guys, two guys actually if you look at the hit points. And just as they're about to die, the KTs and the charioteers arrive and put that thing down. Another crisis averted, but this thing is pretty weak. I have the Erico over here standing by in order for another helicopter offensive to get deterred. But the helicopter hasn't yet spawned in, it only has now. And the AH-1T is going to target the KTs with tow missiles. Fluffing two of their shots, hitting a third. And at that point the KT is almost successful in killing off the AH-1T. Now, here we go again. Um, there is another charge that I'm trying to do with the Charioteers, which is not really a serious push because these guys are blind as a bat. They have bad optics. And there's a K1 over there, which is definitely not... Is it a K1? Yeah, I think it's a K1. It's very much uninterested in having my tanks move to his base again. So, I have the XA-185KTs over here, which are defending the CV although they're actually presenting themselves as one huge target. You can see he tries it again with the F5A, the napalm bomber, not getting to my CV, but it is close. I think the CV might have felt the warmth from that blast. Another scout party comes in, that's the wounded AH-1T. The Erico are reloading their Igla to take another shot at it. 
that's the most important target. The ninja cannot deal with my CV. It can spot it, yes, but it cannot kill it because it does not have rocket pods. So the airco reloads, locks onto the igla and hits. In the meanwhile, the Erica, sorry, the Yekiri over there have spotted what remains of the CV, which is a lowly three points. And um, sadly, I cannot really pursue because there's something shooting at me. But I am at least able to once again force the CV to move. And I believe in the meanwhile... No, there's no CV coming to Dimitri just yet. There's a Napalm Strike going on what I think is a uh, sort of reverse tracer from the Erico. Which also managed to cook off the spikes that I just ordered over there. And the K1 is trying to kill off whatever transport or infantry comes out. There goes the transport. The K1 by some miracle does not get killed by the, the napalm. I was very surprised at that. But I get away with it. And at this point, again, the Eurigan fires at the target. Normally, I probably would have sacrificed the infantry here, but Blitz said no. We're going to keep these alive because they are going to provide infantry. Or, sorry, uh, information. They got medium optics. And with that, you know what the enemy is doing. So that's far more valuable than just having them walk to their deaths, hoping to potentially find the CV. At this point, there is suddenly a jolt of life from the middle of the map. We got the infantry, the K1, and whatever, ever, whatever else he has over here. And, uh, well, it's definitely some stuff coming to my position. Which is pretty close to my CV. It's not really what I want. Oh, and there's also the other K1 over there. I um, had uh, an SA-150 coming in to resupply the guys over here and to heal up the CV. I wasn't really expecting slash hoping to see the K1 over here. But the T-55 should be able to take that right out. Now this kills an XA-180 over there. Here comes the tank. Pretty close warfare. Sadly, the tank is able to kill my Ito. Just before the peon takes it out. Sadly. At this point, the units over here in the middle are making a fairly desperate move. But I'm not sure if they were actually making a move to kill my CV. Or forcing a distraction while his CV moves in. And since I have no further infantry except for the Erico in there... I cannot yet move in quick enough. But what I can try and do is hunt his guys down with the XA 180s, sorry, 185s, the helicopter, and the Erico. But this is where I'm going to make a mistake. Because I'm going to move the CV. And because I move the CV, he's going to temporarily have hold of this area. Now, fortunately, here, now it's blue. This is when he could have spawned in stuff. Fortunately, he does not do it. He does not do it, but it could have very easily been done. If he had done that, that would have meant I had units spawning over here at the crossroads, which would have been potentially deadly. Now this is when the K1s make a move. Uh, Ranico are working over the K1s. I got the charioteers even flank shotting the K1s, or at least attempting to deal damage. And I have two T55s coming up to deal more damage to whatever K1 happens to survive. And there you go, both tanks neutralized. At this point, um, I have Boris, I have Dimitri and Elena under fairly good control. There might still be something here. I believe that I have at this point already lost some force that I sent over there. Is this it? Yeah, I sent two XA-185KTs over there with Yekiri, but they died inside of their vehicles. Um, this area is not exactly under my control, but Dimitri is... Gregory is definitely not yet under my control. I don't know what is in there, but I know that something, or definitely, well, not definitely, but most likely stuff will not get in here if it tries to come up this road. Although the guy is probably a little distracted with trying to keep his, uh, or trying to get back his Boris area. So he ramps up the bombing campaign and goes with two F5As. Seemingly hell-bent on torching the forest and the buildings, but not getting my CV. This was a bad move. I get another Erico squad involved, attempting to spot the CV. But, um, well, I offload them far, far, far too far ahead. The position here would have been far more safe. And I could have shot at helicopters and planes alike as they were moving towards this 
well, supposed TV position, because that, I think, is the third F5A. And sadly, the ITO is dead, so I have to call in a new one. And you can see that this is why the position is bad. The helicopter blows up, killing five of my special forces, and then the rest of the Erico are fair game to the ITO, sorry, to the H1T, which hunts it down with a bunch of rocket pods. Another F5A comes in. At this point, the Erico are here squarely out of ammo. And this bombing run goes all the way here, towards Federer. That's where he's going to try and guesstimate where my CV is, which is a pretty bold assessment. Although he's not exactly wrong, because this is where my CV used to be. Oh, sorry, this is where he bombs, not there. So, yeah, that's again no joy. Um, a peace pheasant flies over, which I was a bit surprised about. But he might have been trying to snipe something. I'm just not sure what. That thing's down. The OH-1 turns around. The AH-1T turns around. And at this point, I don't think he has a lot of stuff left. Here comes another bombing run. And this time... This time he gets the CV. This time he actually manages to get the CV. But it doesn't actually cook off. So it's still alive. I take out, uh, or take a couple of shots at another K1, which is parked over there, but the T-55s prove unable to deal with the tank. And then again, I don't really need it dead, I just need it contained, essentially. The AH-1T flies back to base, all panicked, trying to get resupplied. And at this point, um, I think he gives up, because I don't believe there's any further... Oh, hold on, no, there's one more maneuver here. Chuk Yon Sa. They're trying to flank the base. Spot my CV, which is over there, but they'll definitely have seen the uh, artillery that I have. And the ZSU-57-2, the base defense, takes out the unit. And with that offensive failing, I think he gave up. Now, I did lose a fair amount of units over there, but with that, I gained control over vast portions of the map. Thanks to Blitzwar uh, well, pushing me on to be this aggressive, this is the only reason why I won as quickly as I did. Otherwise, this probably, probably would have gone on for 30 to 40 minutes, something like that. It probably would have been turning into a grind war. But I'm very much trying to focus on learning when to be more aggressive, when to hold back, when to be um, preparing ambushes, and when to go full on on the offensive with the KTs. Hope you guys enjoyed the match. If you did, then definitely check out Blitzwar's channel because you can find a lot more of his style of gameplay over there. I'm learning a lot having Blitzwar watch the games and uh, see how I play and then comment on it live and telling me to do stuff different. It is extremely valuable. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you Blitz for coaching. And I'll see you guys soon for more videos.